Hey, hello underwater photographers. Welcome back to Brenter and Underwater. You want some tips? Tips on macro, underwater macro tips. How about unusual tips for improving your underwater macro photography? I'm excited, let's do it. This tutorial is going to go beyond the basic macro tips that we read about all the time in the magazines and websites. Get low, get close to your subject, etc. So there's a place for those, but let's set those aside. We're going to focus on unusual tips and some of the tips that I think complement all the things we regularly talk about in photo instruction that will help make a big impact on your underwater photography. Maybe you've heard these before, maybe you haven't. You'll see they actually tie into some of these big tips. So let's get started. Tip number one is smart composition. Now let's set the camera aside for a second. This is so important because you need to adopt a photography mindset to create great images regardless of the camera you're using. So when you have an idea of the image you want to create, maybe you're pre-visualizing the type of shot you want to bring home, you are going to immediately start doing better because you're looking for opportunities to create those types of photos. Now we know some basics. We want to have a subject facing us. We like eye contact, those types of things. So if you're swimming over a subject dum -da -dum, along the reef, you stop, you take a picture like this and like this and swim along, that's not really going to help deliver the photos that we want. So by keeping that photo mentality, you can say, all right, I want the right composition. So let me get down low, let me get um, closer to my subject and let me move in in this sense. When we have that mentality, we're able to really, really improve our underwater macro photos right off the bat. The other thing is looking for subjects in the right position. If you have a subject that's not facing you and it's in a hole, maybe it'll be tough to light and maybe that's not the subject that's going to bring home the best shot for you. So maybe you want to look for something else. If it's a nudibranch and it's crawling over an edge and all you see is its branchial plume, its gills, sort of the, the butt of the nudibranch, that's not going to be as nice of a photo as if you have the head with the rhinophores, which we consider their eyes. So look for these subjects and look for the subjects in the right position. Now you can always wait for a nudibranch to move. Some move kind of quick like Nimrothas, but others move very slowly, so probably wouldn't wait around for nudibranch to move. But other subjects will move a lot more. Maybe you have a peacock mantis shrimp. Now you can try and shoot inside a little hole and get that mantis shrimp and you can barely see an outline deep in the shadow. Or you can wait back, be very patient, and leave the, the animal at space, and it might come out of the hole and stand and look at you. And since you've been there already hanging out for 60 seconds, you'll be able to shoot a couple shots in nice light with a nice background that will really help create a good composition, right? A good photo. So by thinking about these things and slowing down, taking our time, we can start to really create better photos through that better composition mentality. Tip number two for underwater macro shooting is to stabilize yourself. Especially when you're a newer diver, your buoyancy is up and down. You might have feet that want to rise or sink heavy. You might um, have some issues trying to, to balance yourself or hold the camera stable. So think about it. You're shooting something very, very small, and if the camera is moving up and down like this, it's going to be very hard to compose an image. If you can be stable like this, now you can really compose your image and control. So there's different habitats in different environments and ways to do that. The biggest tip for getting stable, regardless of the experience you have, is to use a muck stick. Now this is an aluminum or a steel rod that's easy to clip off to your BCD or attaches to your wrist, and you can use that to stabilize yourself. I've got links below in the video description, so check those out. But basically, you can use this stick to create a bit of a tripod. So you put it on the ground and help hold stable while you're shooting your photos. And you can rest your hand on the other hand to be very stable, or just put one hand down with the pointer so you're not touching the reef or the rock directly. It's just your pointer on an area of rock or sand without any marine life. And then you're very stable to shoot your photo. So keep that in mind. It's a really good tip and will help stabilize you and can also be used just for checking out small subjects. Let's say you're on the substrate and there's a lot of sand and you don't want to kick and silt out the whole area for all your dive buddies who want to look at the subject. Simply push off of your stick, again on an area of sand or bare rock, no coral, no reef, nothing like that. Push off and now you're off the reef a little bit and can kick away carefully versus trying to fin or do something like this. All your dive buddies will really, really appreciate it. 
And tip number three, and this is something that so many photographers are guilty of, and it is review your images. And what I meant was photographers are guilty of not reviewing their images, me included. Sometimes you, you get complacent. Oh, I shot a photo and then move on. You load the photos on your computer. You realize, hey, this photo isn't that good. It's not usable. Or I could have improved it by changing my lighting or waiting for the subject to move. So the biggest tip here, review every single image. If you shoot two images in a row with bad settings, guess what? Both are gonna have the same bad results. If you shoot one image, see the poor result, adjust your settings, your lighting, your positioning, whatever it is, and then shoot a second image, it's immediately going to be better. So the beauty with digital is we can shoot a number of frames. So after each frame, review your image. Hmm, I think I could change the composition in this image. Let me move over a little bit here and then now shoot your next image, review again. Say, okay, now I think I can move my light over here to shine more on the face, shoot again. So by reviewing the images, we can make those improvements. If you're just swimming over, shooting the shot and moving on, you have no chance to improve your photography. So that's what we're doing. We want to review the images in camera when we're shooting and throughout shooting with the subject. And then also once you get back onto your computer and you're looking at your images, don't delete the bad ones right away. Keep some of those bad images and look at them, look at the settings, compare the settings towards the images that are good, and you're gonna to start to discover, hmm, my aperture was off, or my strobe didn't fire, or my light was positioned and mostly missing the subject. Those are the things you can start to learn when you review your images, so in camera and on the computer. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully those tips are fairly new for you and you haven't heard them. If you have, hopefully we drive it in because we want you thinking about those tips when you're out there diving. If you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that red button below, tap it, hit it, slap it, whatever you need to do because you'll be first to know of new videos. Also visit my website, tutorials.brentdurand.com and you'll see a lot more videos and tutorial articles to help you improve your underwater photography. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.